Hi all. <coughs> I wanted to put a new tool on letsplaychess.com to help um, more easily, more conveniently look at the opening positions reach, the critical opening positions reach. So these could be from over the board games or um, online blitz um, as well as just on the site. So if we go into the master collection of letsplaychess.com which I hope you might consider becoming a full member one day because uh, it's the site I do for a living if you're not aware of that already. Um, but I put in a new feature recently where you can do a very quick uh, search for a PGN game score. Now, um, so if we select PGN game score there and then go into my um, notepad where I've noted down some of the PGN game scores of previous Blitz games which I've shown you. Um, so let's take the last one for example and all we're going to do is copy and paste the whole lot in there. In fact, because this has carriage returns, um, it will only go up to the first carriage return, but we, we could get rid of them and to go further. Um, so let's see how far that goes if I try and paste this in now. So um, I'll paste the whole lot in there. And what it will do is look at that game score in reverse and show the critical uh, theoretical opening positions which it had. So um, it went up to the Tarash closed variation and if we wanted to we could um, have a look at the opening explorer from that position. But before we do that let's see if we can go a bit deeper. I'll click um, back and see so we've pasted up to um, are quite far in. So that means actually that when when we click search here that that wasn't particularly theoretical after here. So if we click this for opening explorer um, White's main moves according to this would be um, Bishop D3 and E5. So E5 is actually more common um, than Bishop D3 and what the opponent played um, in this position. So after knight d2, knight f6, the opponent played bishop d3. So, and I played c5. So let's have a quick look at that. Bishop d3. So let's see if I went theoretically wrong here. So bishop d3 is a playable move. So I played c5. So knight c6, there was one game found. Bishop e7, bishop b4, a6, b6. But c5 is the most common, actually. So we'll follow c5. And then what did the opponent play? c3. And I played knight c6. So we'll follow this. Um, so c3. Black's doing reasonably okay in this line. 19 to 30. Um, now here I played um, knight c6, so we'll follow knight c6. And white played knight e2, and I played queen b6. So knight g1 to e2 is still kind of a playable move according to this. And queen b6 is a playable move. So let's look at queen b6. And now e5. So in fact the opponent did play e5. So we're following at least one master stem game. Now knight fd7, which I played. Then there was knight f3 and, and f6. So we're going to find out here at least, you know, was my f6 uh, premature here, allowing that knight f4? Or was it a playable move, in fact? Well, bishop e7 is a very popular move in that position. So black doesn't worry about casting um, kingside. So has f6 been played? c takes d4 is also very popular, we can see, but it's got a big... Um, majority of wins for white. So this does seem to be a very interesting line for white. F5, there's F6. 
So f6. So bishop e7 was was more um, common. And that's funny, actually. The gold was green uh, last weekend. Um, and I am was saying, you know, I had played f6 and he had played bishop e7 in this knight c6 French. So maybe that could be an opening Achilles heel that I, you know, bishop e7 is often more solid than playing f6. Um, so we'll see f6, e takes and knight takes f6. I think knight f4 was, was interesting for me. Um, although there are some games with, with knight f4. But he played e takes f6. Let's have a look at this. So we're reaching here another very common position, though, by transposition. So knight takes f6. And now castle c takes d4. Ah. So this might be agreeing with what I've just said, really, about this game. That castles, in this position, maybe it's... Um, We're, we're still, believe it or not, following c takes d4. So c takes d4 here. And now he played knight e takes d4. So knight e takes d4 is a common move. But more common is actually just taking the pawn. So is this a little bit of a tricky move? He's putting more pressure on e6. So this was the main problem with, with that blitz game. It seems, you know, I had a, an e6 disaster. And I played bishop d6 here. Now what are people playing? Someone has played bishop d6 and won with that. Um, so that's interesting. And also knight takes d4 has been played. So how did a master game um, have that move with bishop d6? What happened there? Because in the game he played rook e1 and I castled. So there's no rook e1 here. Um, so actually you might need to do an, an engine analysis here to see what's going on. Why isn't there a rook e1? So knight takes d4 is, is an interesting move. Let's actually have a look at the games here with bishop, bishop takes d, bishop to d6. So bishop to d6, Renton against Leicester, so it was in the Young Masters in Adelaide, doesn't seem to be that you know much of an authoritative game, um, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to play through that one. Let's have a quick look at um, the games of c, c takes, knight on c6 takes d4 though. Matusu versus Simon. Again, doesn't impress me as, as a majorly authoritative game. So, you know, maybe sometimes it's better just, just to get an engine analysis uh, to see what, you know, the engine for of, of the particular moves um, in the opening, even in the opening. Because it's like, in effect, having a huge database if there's no, you know, database reference games for what was played. So basically, Bishop d6 has actually been played before in this position with the knight on d4. So it's interesting what would happen if rook e1. In fact, we can flip open an analysis board, which is, um, okay, it's not an engine, but um, we, can, we can have a look at... Um, so knight takes d4, bishop d6, rook e1, castles. I think basically my the the problem was um just casting maybe knight takes d4 first and that would have basically solved the problem here of of dropping the e6 pawn because of that tactic the important tactic of having bishop takes h2 so I think that concurs with with what I've said really that um casting was maybe in the state knight takes d4 then if knight takes d4 then castles, because then the e6 pawn would be immune, because knight takes e6, bishop takes rook e6, bishop takes h2 check, king takes, queen takes e6. So um, let's, let's close that window. And let's go back 
to the mask collection, see if we've got time for just one more bit of opening analysis. So I'll go to learn from the masters, and I'll go to the previous PGN game score. Um, oh, that was the pin variation. So I'll just copy that um, game score, but I'll take away the carriage returns to get more of them. It being able to put in at once. So I'll, I'll put in all of those start moves now. So PGN game score, I'll paste that in. And let's see what's made of this. So it, it just makes it a little bit more convenient to step backwards. So for the most theoretical positions, um, backwards in the game. So it was the timing of variation of the Sicilian.